Ex-Liverpool player Jermaine Pennant splits from wife after her vagina rejuvenation. Alice Goodwin, Jermaine Pennant's wife has announced on her Instagram page that she and her husband are no longer together. This comes days after her vagina rejuvenation where she stated that it boosted her body confidence and love life. In her words, Hi guys, before any speculation starts I'd like to let people know that Jermaine and I are no longer in a relationship. We have spent nine years together with ups and downs but ultimately we couldn't make it work. I will always care for Jermaine and wish him the best but at this point, all avenues have been explored to make the marriage work and sometimes things just aren't meant to be. There is no drama, scandal animosity, or bitterness, just two people whose journey has come to an end together. We have made this decision mutually and we are both looking forward to what the next chapter has in store. Jermaine also made this announcement on his Instagram story, he writes. After nine years together and nearly six years married, Alice and I have decided to separate. I will always love Alice, but we've decided to head our separate ways. There is no drama and we will always remain close friends. This will not be the first time the duo will be having issues in their marriage. They briefly split in 2018 after Jermaine and on a TV show called Celebs Go Dating, they discussed these issues. Jermaine is said to have dropped a flirty comment on model Chloe Ayling's Instagram. In his words, I was on a show and a scenario occurred where I was flirting. I overstepped the mark a little bit and wasn't thinking about the consequences. I said, I wasn't married. Alicia also was not open to the idea of having a baby even though Jermaine wanted it. Following their dinner on Celebs Go Dating, Alice appeared open to practicing for babies after placing Jermaine in the good books. The couple has been together for nine years. Dua Lipa gets physical in sexy, homage music video to Olivia Newton-John and workouts of the 80s. This look, familiar. Dua Lipa channeled Olivia Newton-John in her new video that was definitely giving some major 80s flashbacks. What a visual feast. Dua Lipa, 24, brought the fun, fashion, and more in her Let's Get Physical workout video that premiered on Friday, March. 6. The nearly six-minute clip began with the British beauty introducing herself as the viewer's instructor while looking absolutely stunning in a bright yellow bathing suit with the word physical splashed multiple times across the middle. Her two-toned hair, which only enhanced the overall ensemble itself, was kept up in a knot but was still long enough to reach all the way past her chest. The retro-looking video then transitioned into the gym where her backup dancers were introduced. Each had their own unique name, Ginger Snap and Extra VA being two examples, but were still connected in the fashion department with everyone looking like they came fresh from the 80s. Cue the workout, related choreography. Dua and her crew continued on in the clip by expertly doing workouts that were popular nearly 40 years ago. Things got a tad in SFW later on in the footage when the gang started doing pelvic thrusts on their brightly colored mats. Oh my. Fans praised the video and song in the comments section, with one passionately writing, she's saving the pop industry by bringing these 80s elements to her songs. It's like she's creating something unique and nostalgic at the same time. The theme of the clip and her fans' words makes sense as her upcoming album is called Future Nostalgia. It officially drops on April 3rd. Dua's newest video pays homage to Olivia Newton-John's classic hit physical in terms of its sound and overall look. The Grease Babes record, where the video featured her working out alongside several scantily clad men, was ranked number one on Billboard magazine's top 100 songs of the 1980s list. The 24-year-old's passion for fashion is part of what has made her a growing star over the past couple of years. She looked amazing in a pair of silky white pajamas on the Ellen DeGeneres show back in January while performing her new single, Don't Stop Now. We can't wait to see what Dua comes up with next as her career continues to rise. Maura Higgins laughs with Dancing on Ice co-stars after Curtis Pritchard split. If Maura Higgins is hurt and upset over her recently announced split from Curtis Pritchard, then she is doing an incredible job of covering it up. However, far from locking herself away to mourn the end of a once-inspirational romance, Mora has been dancing and singing up a storm with her dancing on Ice Go Stars. Taking to Instagram stories on Friday, the Irish beauty could be seen laughing, singing, and dancing away with fellow contestants and skating professionals. Mora took delight in sharing multiple video clips of herself fooling around behind the scenes of the ITV Winter Sport Reality Contest alongside Ian e H from Steps Watkins. The pair were cartwheeling through corridors and belting out tunes by Lady Gaga, while rather than cry on co star Trisha Goddard's shoulder, Mora beamed with a smile beside her. Mora could be seen enjoying the Heartbreak album Million Reasons by the chart-topping American singer, while also enjoying sing-alongs to her new single Stupid Love, 
and lip-syncing to the Oscar-winning song Shallow from the 2018 film A Star Is Born. On Monday, Mora confirmed that her romance with Curtis was over following seven months together. Curtis and I have made the decision to separate. We enjoyed a great experience from our time in the villa and want to thank everyone for supporting our relationship, she wrote on Instagram as she broke the news. There is no easy way to get through a breakup and no bad feeling on either side. We tried to make it work, but it wasn't to be and I wish Curtis nothing but the best for the future, she wrote, finishing her post with a broken heart emoji. Ronaldinho arrested in Paraguay over fake passport tro. Football star Ronaldinho has been arrested in a hotel in Paraguay's capital after authorities said he entered the country with falsified documents. The 39-year-old Brazilian and his brother, Roberto Assis, were taken to a police station in Asuncion shortly before 10 p.m. local time on Friday, Paraguay's prosecutor's office said in a statement. Ronaldinho's lawyer Sergio Queiroz confirmed the arrest to the Associated Press and said his legal team in Paraguay had filed an injunction to release the 2002 World Cup winner and his brother. Shortly before the arrest Queiroz told the AP the former Barcelona star was preparing to take a flight back to Rio de Janeiro, where he lives. Ronaldinho and Assis were questioned for six hours earlier about what police said were false Paraguayan documents found in their possession on Wednesday. The Brazilians said they had come to Asuncion for business reasons. The former footballer and his brother said the documents were offered as a gift by a Brazilian businessman, Wilman Souza Liria, who has already been jailed. Oxford Street Fire, huge blaze, rips through store as 70 firefighters on scene. A fire broke out at a souvenir shop on London's Oxford Street on Friday evening. London Fire Brigade says 70 firefighters were battling the blaze, on the ground floor of a five-story building near the West One shopping center, into the early hours. Ten fire engines were at the scene after the brigade's 999 control officers took 13 calls to the fire, which reportedly broke out in Color London, a souvenir shop. It left Oxford Street closed in both directions between Marble Arch and Oxford Circus with people advised to avoid the area. The fire was brought under control by 2.14 a.m. on Saturday. No injuries have been reported. The building, which has flats above, is located on Gilbert Street at the junction with Oxford Circus near the Russell and Bromley Shoe Store and Lloyd's Bank. The cause of the fire is still being investigated. A spokesman for London Fire Brigade told Mirror Online, 10 fire engines and around 70 firefighters have been called to a fire at a shop with flats above on Gilbert Street at the junction with Oxford Street in Mayfair. The brigade was called at 21.38. Fire crews from Soho, Lambeth, Kensington, Chelsea, Kentish Town, Euston, and surrounding fire stations are at the scene. Donald Trump names Mark Meadows as fourth chief of staff. Donald Trump has named Mark Meadows as White House chief of staff, replacing acting chief Mick Mulvaney at a time when the administration is under mounting pressure over its response to the coronavirus. The U.S. president announced the appointment on Twitter late Friday, saying, I have long known and worked with Mark, and the relationship is very good one. Mr. Meadows, a congressman from North Carolina, is one of Mr. Trump's closest congressional allies. Mr. Meadows, 60, will be Mr. Trump's fourth chief of staff in just over three years. Mr. Mulvaney had been in the position in an acting capacity since January 2019 in addition to his role as director of the Office of Management and Budget. The role of chief of staff has traditionally been viewed as the second most powerful job in Washington but the importance of the position has been diminished by the U.S. president. Mr. Mulvaney was a central figure in Mr. Trump's impeachment investigation and the congressional probe into whether the president withheld military aid to Kiev in exchange for political favors from his Ukrainian counterpart. Mr. Mulvaney was subpoenaed by the congressional committees, leading the probe, but refused to comply with the investigation. In a rare press conference in October, he told reporters that the aid was withheld in an effort to persuade Kiev to investigate what Mr. Trump said was corruption by the Democrats in the 2016 election. He later attempted to walk back his remarks, issuing a statement saying the aid was withheld to convince Ukraine to root out corruption more broadly, and insisting that there had been no quid pro quo. Mr. Trump said on Friday that Mr. Mulvaney had served the administration so well and would become the U.S. Special Envoy for Northern Ireland. Mr. Meadows is a former chair of the House Freedom Caucus. He was a particularly fierce defender of the president during his impeachment trial. The congressman announced at the end of last year that he would not seek re-election in 2020, prompting speculation that he would be offered a key role in the administration. Meghan Markle delights fans with secret hologram-inspired appearance at National Theatre. Meghan Markle impersonated Nabiya Brandon 
who was featured in the exhibition, All Kinds of Limbo. The Duchess wore an organza puff-sleeved blouse from Topshop and a white bodycon pencil shirt. On her visit to the South Bank Theatre, Meghan also wore small gold hoop earrings and a Sophie Lee's pendant. Duchess attended the secret solo trip to fulfill her duties as patron of the London Theatre. Meghan will stay on as a patron in spite of her move to Canada. Bosses say they are confident she will stay engaged as they continue to work with her and her star reach, according to the Daily Mail. Speaking to the paper Rufus Norris, the artistic director, said the theatre chiefs were not informed of Meghan's plans to move, but she understands the nature of what we're trying to do. The Duchess was made a patron of the National Theatre in January 2019, while also taking on roles with the Mayhew, Smart Works, and the Association of Commonwealth Universities. Meghan was seen with Mr. Norris shortly before her announcement to move to Canada. Earlier this month Nika Burns, a top West End producer, told the Daily Mail that Meghan may only have until the Easter to prove her fortitude as a patron of the theatre. The co-owner of the NIMAX Group, which constitutes six London West End theatres, Mr. Burns, has said that Meghan should not hold the position indefinitely. He stated, I think we should give Meghan until Easter to be able to say what she thinks is possible with her patronage. We had to give her a chance, forget who she is, and give her some space. If she is not going to be doing any work with the National, then she should step down, but as she is a role model, we would rather she didn't. For the Sussexes' first joint royal engagement since Megxit, the Duchess joined her husband Prince Harry later at the Endeavour Fund Awards at Mansion House. The annual event honours the achievements of the wounded, sick and injured servicemen and women who have taken part in sporting and adventure challenges.